Okay, let's look at Aronian's Revenge in the Rapid. Uh, it's actually, I believe, 25 minutes, not 30, and it's with increments. I think it's 10 second increments per move, which means <clears throat> that the quality is not going to go completely downhill in end games, as they'll be able to generate time. Um, okay, so Grizzchuk playing white played d4, and we see d5. And of the c4, we see a very exciting move. We're potentially losing trump card of the bishop being hemmed in. We see e6, not the Slav. So this is a really uh, pleasant surprise that Aronian uh, is playing e6. Okay, a bit controversial. The old classical way, hem in the bishop, but you know, liberate later. Okay, so knight c3, bishop e7. Is this a slight, you know, uh, devious improvement over knight f6? Well, maybe, you know, it's encouraging uh, white um, not to be able to play, you know, the natural bishop g5 immediately. So what does white do? Uh, white doesn't want to hem in his own bishop. Um, and uh, knight f3, though, might might allow, I don't know, d takes c4. But uh, white, you know, removes the possibility of d takes c4, actually. He plays c takes d5 here. And he actually puts his bishop on f4. So none of this this old classical transposition, you know, with bishop g5, just bishop f4. So what's the point of this? After c6, we see queen c2. So maybe white's going to, like, um, even consider castling queenside. Technically, you know, he's enabled for that. But, uh, you know, is it a bit risky? We've seen in, in other games in the candidates, you know, um, especially the Kamsky win, um, with, with black, where um, you know uh, Topolov castled queenside and was you know it was a horrendous game after. Um, so here, okay, White's not developing his kingside yet. He hasn't developed the knight, and in fact, he plays the move e3. And this move does hem in the bishop, you know, behind its own pawn chain, and it's pounced on now by black this seemingly routine move with this move knight h5 now okay some of us might consider bishop g3 and not mind you know knight g3 hg because you have h fold pressure but uh black's not obliged to take on on g3 bishop g3 you know black might just play f5 and then torture this bishop later um but the bishop uh first actually it uh it just goes to e5 here and in fact, after knight d7, it doesn't retreat back uh, to g3. There's an idea of leaving a white pawn here uh, to be able to target this offside knight. So bishop e2. And after knight e5, white just plays d takes e5. So he's sealed off this knight from retreating back. And this is going to look like a horrendous pawn structure so quite shocking for someone you know with such a solid you know slavian reputation uh to be playing the game in such a manner uh g6 allowing you know doubled h pawns but he's got the bishop pair where you see double pawns of horrendous structures you often see you know active bishops and active rooks and active roads of of, of counterplay and here is no different uh, White's giving up, you know, potentially precious light square bishop, and it's this, you know, light square bishop which is going to be a hero later on this diagonal. So it comes at some cost to double black's pawns. Uh, White's castled queenside, which carries its own liabilities. So f6, not another non routine move, uh, just trying to get rid of this, you know, advanced pawn and be able to use the f6 square maybe for the bishop for this diagonal the bishops would be kind of complementing each other uh on these two diagonals potentially so knight f3 takes and now black castles and there's immediately f file pressure as well but uh f4 makes sure the queen is not tied down babysitting f2 reinforces the knight on e5 the knight is now challenged, bishop d6 actually, so knight f3. And now we see this 
bishop, which is quite powerful on the light squares. No counterpart from white with a light square bishop. So queen d2 and now queen f6. So black has the two bishops and the dicing of his pawn structure doesn't really mean much. It actually is kind of useful, this pawn, to stopping g4s. It's kind of prophylaxis built into the position as well as the bishop pair. But uh, white plays e4, a tactical move to get this guy, but give up this guy. And white's pawn structure is also damaged by this mini transaction here. So queen d6, e takes f3. So after queen f6, rook f6, g takes f3, who stands better? That's the question. Equal on pawns, but uh, white's joined in with the double pawns idea. But uh, is this knight better than, sorry, is this knight actually worse than this bishop? This bishop looks a bit superior here. And also black's rooks look at the moment as though they're going to be more useful because the rook's already on the f file and these poor double pawns are more exploitable than white's double pawns. So I would say black has a small advantage here intuitively, especially as bishop g6 carries an immediate threat as an example. So the knight's a bit passive now and again it can be attacked and again you know black's plan is attacking another pawn f3 so clearly <laughs> these pawns um, are brilliant targets for these rooks and these rooks are definitely more agile and effective in this position than white's rooks so rook f1 passive rook on f1 bishop d3 nasty pin immediately threatening to win a piece passive defense and now the black king is brought up here so black can just win a pawn but he doesn't want any invasion on the seventh rank uh, with rook e7 so king f7 snuffs that out protects the e7 square so bishop e7 is again going to win a pawn but more comfortably if needed but first actually black carries on the torture because if the knight moves there's rook f4 black gains a bit more space h4 after king b2, now finally this is done, this bishop e2. So black is just a pawn up now. But is it an effective pawn? These these h pawns are doubled. Okay, white has no clear entry point for his rook. There's a 3 to 2 on this side. This pawn is white's past pawn, basically. But uh, it's easily blockaded and naturally blockaded at the moment, even with the king on f7 distantly. So how can white start herding the f-pawn? Is that really on the cards? Well, rook d4, king c3, the king's coming across it seems, or trying to, f4. But this king is coming to a nice square now, potentially f5 to try and munch that f4-pawn, or even from from behind, like from the with the rook. So, okay, check, and now the pawn's taken. Okay, white's basically lost his pass pawn and black has lost his double pawns. So clearly black is now more of a real pawn up without the double pawns. So he's still just one pawn up, but it's a real, you know, three to two pawn majority here. Not only that, um, black's rook seems, you know, it's again got more of a target, this h2, and the king's a little bit more, more uh, effective here. So check and in fact, two pawns up now. So that's fairly concrete demonstration. <laughs> the rook's more active. Rook, rook h7, but is offering uh, the queenside pawns here. So king g6, offering queenside pawn. h3, a fast running h pawn, or is it? Instructive rook and pawn ending here at move 41. So rook b8, but this is probably, you know, this is at the... Um, the 10 second move increment now is kicking in with great effect. So is it routine? Is it technique for either side? It looks as though, you know, black's got all the winning chances with that dangerous pass pawn on h3. So rook f2, after rook h8, h2, tying down the white rook, king d3. So what's black's first plan? We see king g5, as though the king's going to come to g3 and herd the pawn down. But the white king's coming to the rescue. So white's now offering his queenside pawns, but he's grabbing now black's dangerous h pawn. So the emphasis is now shifting again to these pawns. So forget the h pawn. 
is going to be about those two pawns on the queen side and in particular now it's going to be about black's c pawn because now white is also going to lose uh, the h pawn sorry black is also going to lose the h pawn soon off of the h pawn um, so we get this position h pawn drops the king so far away now so can it really get back to save this position well from the evidence of this game it was tricky so king b3 king b2 check tricky let's actually put this into an engine to see if it could have been uh, theoretically saved no it's a huge advantage uh, for black if king d3 well that was that was the move played c2 and unfortunately um, Okay, rook h8 was played, but if rook c8, then either check apparently or king d1 is very strong. Even king d1, because you know, if takes, then check and winning the rook. Uh, so this this looks hopeless. Uh, rook h8 was played anyway. Check, and now king b1, and the pawn's um, going to be queening. If uh, check, then Okay, so king a2 and the pawn's queening next move. Right. So that was an interesting um, kind of opening from Aronian. Surprised that he didn't play his Slav, but instead the queen's game had declined. And not only, you know, he creates one potentially losing trump card, this hemmed in bishop, he, he goes for another uh, potentially losing trump card. The doubled h pawns, but in return for that imbalance, the doubled h pawns, he's getting the two bishops. And quite important, importantly, you know, without white having the light square bishop, this bishop on f5 was not bad. Black got rid of his own f pawn, you know, to get pressure on the f file to support bishop f5. So that was a great idea that f6. Um, we can say in retrospect. <laughs> so knight f3, bishop f5 supported by the rook you know made way because that f6 move earlier and you know black was was just clearly uh, slightly better throughout this this game and throughout this end game position he had all all the pressure so uh, you know becoming like a real pawn up and then we have this transaction where the double pawns have got rid of for white's f pawn and then even b7 is offered but black's h pawn is really tying down the white pieces and then we shift attention again to the queen side where the real hero emerges the winning trump card finally is black c pawn some subtle moves here to make sure that the a pawn is ineffectual um, so it can never be um, herded down just with the rook here and um, the king you know is very careful not to allow any tempo gaining checks to queen the pawn of course um, so finally um, it's safe to take the a7 pawn here and just heard that c pawn so very very nice uh, game uh, for a rapid game especially um, okay uh, comments or questions on YouTube and, and hopefully let's you know check out um, unfortunately uh, the other decisive game which um, led to Aronian being knocked out okay Thanks very much.